Welcome to our group garage in this video showing the radial probability distribution or where we think we'll find electrons in the atoms of 1s shell. Niels Bohr gave us the idea of the electron as a particle not only traveling through space but when it came in contact with an atom's nucleus as a particle that circled the atom and the revolutionary idea that there were fixed or quantized orbits for the electron to travel in. French physicist Louis de Broglie proposed that these electrons were not just a particle, but somehow also had wave properties. So there was an electron field, and well, the electrons are just oscillations in this field, but as a wave, where's the particle? We'll only know that if we measure or observe the electron. But doing this, we say, collapses the electron wave, and we observe the electron somewhere within the region of the wave. And if we did this again on a similar wave, we would probably see the electron in a different spot. In fact, if we keep observing where the electron shows up every time we measure the location, we would get a different location within the region. And while the electrons might be found more often near the biggest part of the wave, there is a possibility we'll see one way out here. For hydrogen, with the atomic number of one, there is a single proton and therefore a single electron for a neutral atom. And we represent that electron as a wave or a cloud. And for the S subshell, we know that that cloud is spherically shaped. The shape that we very often see is just a shell or a ball. But remember, the electron doesn't just travel along the edge of the sphere, but we will generally see the electron somewhere inside this shell a certain percentage of the time. When we measure the location, the wave collapses and we find the electron somewhere in the cloud. But each time we measure a new electron, we find it in a different place. And if we keep measuring different electrons, we'll keep finding them in different locations. And after we measure enough, we can really begin to see the spherically shaped pattern for the S subshell. But just looking at the surface, we cannot really tell how these observed locations are distributed throughout this giant ball of sampled locations. So let's just take a vertical slice along the XZ plane. From this pattern, we can see that the electron is usually, or at least more often found, a certain distance from the proton. It is rarely found near the actual center of the atom, and it's also less frequent the farther out we look. If we put back the typical sphere, we can see most of the time the electron will be inside the sphere, of course, you could adjust the size of the sphere to capture more of the percentage of where the location is found. Because the distribution is symmetrically spherical, it would look the same no matter if we cut a slice of the sphere vertically or horizontally. For those so inclined, in 1926, while Max Born was solving some solutions for the Schrodinger equation, he postulated that the probability density of finding a system in a given state when measured is proportional to the square of the amplitude of the system's wave function of that state. So in the graph, we have the wave function, and we can see that the wave function is higher at the center of the atom. Squaring the wave function would still leave us a higher probability density for the electron to actually be at the center of the atom. And most graphs or plots on the internet show this density plot. As we move away from the center, the volume of the atom, or the volume of the small region we're measuring to get the probability of the electron, that region gets larger. And this region gets larger faster than the electron density decreases. So when we multiply these two together, we see the final radial probability shows us that we should anticipate the electron to be the same distance away from the proton that Bohr had predicted. One Bohr radius away from the proton. 0.529 angstroms. And again, since the S subshell is spherically symmetrical, we would see the same electron distribution no matter if we were to slice the orbital along any of the X, Y, or Z planes. That is the 1S orbital, the first principal energy level and the general configuration for hydrogen and helium. Usually, given the representation of the S subshell as a ball or shell, it would be very easy to conclude or think that the distribution of the 2s subshell, the second principal energy level for lithium and beryllium, would just be the same shape and distribution, only larger. However, that is incorrect. Instead of just being larger, the density will have nodes, 
or somewhat separate regions where the density is higher and as well as density is lower. To keep these videos under 5 minutes, we will cover the 2, 3, and maybe 4th S subshell in our next video. Hit the thumbs up if you found this video helpful, and for more, consider becoming a subscriber. If you'd like to support more projects in our group garage, I'd appreciate if you used the link in the description to buy me a coffee. Thanks.